Come be a part of Doc Holliday's Rock Splitting Politics with your host, Dr. Ed Holliday. Hear the voices of liberty speaking all across America. Doc Holliday provides thought-provoking interviews and commentary about the issues and actions that are afflicting this country and what we need to do to get America back on track. Get fired up. Get inspired. Get on board with Doc Holliday's Rock Splitting Politics right now. And here we go. Once again, that's the sound of rock cracking. You've got Doc Holliday's Rock Split and Politics. I'm your host, Dr. Ed Holliday, and you're listening to us right here on webtalkradio.net. Glad to have you, and as time keeps moving on into this year of disaster under uh, Joe Biden, and uh, let's go, Brandon. How about it? But now, I have to tell you, that phrase, let's go, Brandon, uh, being banned, even in Canada, uh, I'm across america that people are banning freedom of speech can you believe it here in america i thought we had freedom of speech (laughs) it's being banned let's go brandon oh wow but i will have to tell you what a show we got today we're going back we're going to dip into this uh blockchain cryptocurrency what we're going to say is bitcoin cryptocurrencies and the world economy how does that mesh together? Well, listen to today's uh, show, uh, Doc Holliday's Rock Split in Politics. We're going to cover some things other people just won't touch on. Do we have all the answers? No. Do we have some good questions? Yes. Are you going to learn something? You should. So listen to this week's show, and we're going to talk about the Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies, and the world economy. What does it mean as it meshes together What's the future look like? So listen up. Before we get to that first, if you want to know what's going on in Washington, D.C., listen to this uh, part of a a committee hearing in the House. Uh, Democrats, uh, of course, are in charge of the House. The chairman is Chairman Congressman Nadler from New York, and minority ranking member is Congressman Jordan Mohau. Just listen to this exchange, and you wonder why you wonder why nothing good comes out of Washington, D.C.? Listen to what happens when the Democrats are in charge of all committee hearings. Take a listen. Uh, Mr. Chairman, we have a video we'd like to play. Mr. Chairman. We have a video we'd like to play. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Dean. I object. What purpose does Ms. Dean seek recognition? I object. I'm reserving my right to object to the video. Why, why would May you I object? inquire as to whether the gentleman has followed the Judiciary Committee's AV protocol but by providing 48 hours notice to the committee's clerk that he was going to use a video? We provided notice. Well, well first of all, there's no 48-hour rule. It's not in the committee rules. Second, we did let the committee staff, the majority, know that we had a video, responding and we gave the video to, the, to him this morning. Responding to the gentlelady's request, he did not. He did not supply the 48 hours rule. Uh, 48, hours, assist, no, 48 hours notice required by the rule. Mr. Chairman. Then I insist on my objection. Mr. Having Chairman. failed to follow the bipartisan protocol, I insist on my objection. An objection has been heard. The video will not be shown. I appeal the ruling of the chair. The appeal, the ruling has been made. There's been an objection. There's been no ruling that was made. There's been no ruling Chairman, that's been made. In, there's been an objection. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to speak regarding No, the, you're, uh, that, that's out of order. This is not debatable. Well, what's out of order is there is no rule that requires a 48-hour notice. That's what's out of order. There is such a rule. There is not. Not in our rules. Mr. Chairman, what are you afraid of? There is such a rule. You objected last year. You were told there was such a rule. Mr. Mr. Um, Chairman, what are our colleagues on the other side of the aisle afraid of? The are they afraid of videos of parents? The gentleman was recognized for his opening statement. Is he finished with his opening the statement? I'm not finished with my opening. I seek recognition for a parliamentary inquiry. It's not, with his opening rule. Statement. it's not a rule. It's it's uh, what you said. I think the term you used is it's protocol. The gentlewoman oh, objected. The uh, conduct of the committee rules do. That's not a rule. We had a video. We understood you had a video. I seek recognition for a parliamentary inquiry. The gentlewoman objected because you failed to follow the rule. Her objection is sustained. 
Mr. Chairman, I see. Does the gentleman have anything else? I see. Anything we else? had a recognition had, for a yeah, parliamentary we had, inquiry. We had. Yeah, but, uh, it's, uh, I'll yield back in just a second, and, and particularly if you're going to recognize Mr. Yields back? No, I haven't yielded back yet. I said I will in a second. Um, it's a video about parents at school board meetings, moms and dads speaking at school board meetings, and you guys aren't going to let us play it? The, it will not be played. An objection has been heard that uh, you failed to give the 48 hours request required by the rule, and therefore what, what it will rule? Not be heard. Mr. Chairman, what rule? You have to say the inquiry, rule. What rule? Please present the rule. In the case of audio visual materials under the leadership of my predecessor, Chairman Goodlatte, a Republican, the committee developed a written protocol for managing the use of audiovisual materials in our hearings. Written protocol. This protocol simply requires members to provide 48 hours notice they are Never going to protocol. use audiovisual materials. Until recently, this, con this protocol was not controversial. It was a helpful tool we used to manage hearings and make sure videos played properly. The gentlewoman has objected to the materials because the gentleman did not provide the agreed upon 48 hours notice. Playing audiovisual materials during a committee hearing is the equivalent of introducing printed materials into the hearing record. In the normal course of business, we do not object to each other's requests, but members have the right to object if they so choose, and an objection has been heard. M Mr. Chairman, did we ever vote on that? It, the gentleman is That's a clever written statement, but a, a protocol is not a rule. Statement. Mr. Chairman, obviously you're not going to let us play it. Obviously you're going to censor us, which is sort of the, the, the conduct of the left today, it seems. Um, and Democrats today, it seems, I'll, I yield back uh, the balance of my time. Well, you talk about wasting, <laughs> wasting people's time. <laughs> Chairman Nadler, is a, there's no rule there, but it is with Chairman Nadler there. He makes the rules up, doesn't he? It just seems such a, uh, thank goodness for Congressman Jordan. And he has stood up time and time again against the nonsense of the left. But the left is in charge. Why? Well, so many people in so many states seem to love mandates, seem to love <laughs> no freedom from all this COVID. Why won't congressional districts wake up and, uh, and realize if you, don't, <laughs> if you don't like these mandates, if you don't like people losing their jobs because they just don't want to uh, take an experimental jab, well... <laughs> Stop voting for the socialists. The socialists are in charge. You got people like Chairman Nadler that won't even let a video of parents <laughs> had a school board meeting. He refuses to let it be played. I mean, that is, it shows the fear because the Democrats know exactly what they're doing. They're following the socialist mandate. The, the, the socialists are mandating that the Democratic Party move so far left that the socialists get what they want. And what we've said over uh, at this show many times is stop enabling the Democrats to be socialist. Until they kick the socialists out of the Democratic Party, stop voting for Democrats. It's that simple. America, wake up, smell the coffee, and get to work before 2022. Wow. Uh, Let's get on to the Bitcoin, cryptocurrency, and the world economy. As many people know, we try to educate, sometimes they say conservatives, and people who want to see the America hang on to our values are a little bit scared of cryptocurrency, and they don't understand it. So we've taken several shows, go back in our archives, we've talked to some experts, we've talked to people who started cryptocurrencies and made uh, millions and even had a billionaire on the air and so what we're saying is I'm not encouraging anybody to go out and invest in cryptocurrencies or Bitcoin but you need to understand that and it's affecting what we're looking at around the world and what's our future look like well we're going to talk about that and it's very important so listen up because what I'm going to say three words America, China, and the rest of the world. It's more than three words, but three subjects America, China, and the rest of the world. How will the world deal with cryptocurrencies? We see right off the bat that China now has banned all cryptocurrencies. They don't want miners in China when I talk about 
Bitcoin and some of the cryptocurrencies have to be what they call mined. It takes a lot of computer power, which burns a lot of energy. And Elon Musk has talked about that. He does not like the way Bitcoin burns so much energy, and it's been studied. But for to make it all simple, <laughs> there's uh, some cryptocurrencies like the starting Bitcoin and many of the first coins. That's all they had was using mathematical formulas over uh, different computers around the world. And, and that's what we call mining. So they can earn some Bitcoin to, to uh, proceed with uh, getting a blockchain, everything listed and making it work. Well, there are some currencies that is called proof of work. They work the mathematical equations. They are cryptocurrencies that go by proof of stake of some degree. Now you can look at uh, you look at our homepage. We have I just because I want people to know more about cryptocurrencies. There's one that I've enjoyed studying, watching, not telling anybody to invest in it, but uh, it's been one that's uh, making some waves. Not the big waves, but people are watching. It's called Harmony. Now Harmony and its call letters are O N E, but Harmony is not on proof of work. It does not cause all the computers to heat up and need a lot of energy because it's what they call proof of stake. So you don't have to have miners. It has something that uh, you, it's called staking, that people who own it can stake it so it can move forward. So we won't get into the deep part of it, but just recognize the fact that Bitcoin and, and uh, some of the other cryptocurrencies have to be mined, and some of the some some of the newer ones that came after Bitcoin are have proof of stake. That means that they don't cause so much energy. So, what does that mean to you? <laughs> well, it means that in the future, all these people, the global, uh, all the climate change uh, fanatics, not yelling at Bitcoin. But conservatives need to understand that cryptocurrencies are not to be feared. They're to be understood. And some people are making money. A lot of people are making money off of it. They say, well, what's it based on? Well, what's the American dollar based on? And they say, well, they use cryptocurrency for uh, illegal activities. Well, how many times have American dollars, how many movies have you seen with suitcases full of American dollars for illegal activities? So, no, don't give me that about the cryptocurrencies and illegal activities. But I will have to say, look at China. China banned all cryptocurrency. Why? We got to ask ourselves, why did China ban Bitcoin and all cryptocurrencies? What do you think? Control. They don't want anybody especially in the financial world, in the whole country of China, they want control. They want to know where everything is bought, spent, and cryptocurrency has a way of getting around that. People can use cryptocurrency and they've got a computer and access their computer and the Internet. You, you can uh, trade around the world. And China does not want that. They want total control. In fact, if you look at what's coming up, the the Chinese are hosting, in the country of China, hosting the Winter Olympics coming up uh, February in 2022, coming up soon. And they want everybody there, all visitors, everybody, all athletes, to use the new Chinese digital yuan. Like America has the dollars, China has won, and they have made a digital yuan. And it's very scary. It is not cryptocurrency. It is based on blockchain to a degree, but it's the government controls it. And they won't, and if they get rid of all other forms of money and they just have their Chinese cryptocurrency or what they call the digital yuan, that's it. You can't change it for any other. Only the Chinese yuan. They will have access to every penny every tra financial transaction that every citizen makes they want that so why did they 
ban Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies, it's not because they're protecting their citizens. They want to control their citizens. So what does that mean for America? And what's America need to do? Well, we're going to talk about that <laughs> when uh, on the second half of the show. First, right now, let me remind you, you're listening to Doc Holliday's Rock Split and Politics. You're listening to us right here on webtalkradio.net. We're glad to have each and every one of you. We've got new people listening. And I know with the title, we may have some people listening for the first time to find out what we're thinking about Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies. And if you come here to listen about uh, what to buy or uh, of what's going up or what's the price prediction, well, we're not doing that here on Doc Holliday's Rock Split and Politics. I am encouraging people to know more about cryptocurrencies, more about Bitcoin. And that's why we're doing this show today and how it's affecting the world economy. We're about to get to that. We've touched on China, but we've got some important things to talk about America and the rest of the world and how it meshes together. So stay tuned. We'll get to that in just a minute. But let me remind you that we got a book out. It's uh, Doc Holliday wrote that along with uh, Dr. Alveda King and Dr. Alex McFarland. It's called Bedrock Truths. If you don't have that book, we'd love to get it out to you. And you can go to www.docholiday.org. Now, Holiday has two L's in there. So uh, uh, go to www.docholiday.org, and you can order that book. We'd love to get it out for you. And if uh, you got one already, you can get one for your friends or neighbors, and especially your liberal, friend, liberal friends that uh, need a re uh appreciate the values this nation was founded on so uh, be sure to go check that out and we got a couple other books and things we want to look at we'll be glad to get that to you if you want to uh, purchase those now let's get to the second half of the show i do have a video clip in a minute talking about stable coins now we said bitcoin cryptocurrency and i just used the term term stable coin if you don't know much about cryptocurrency, you need to know what a stable coin is. So let me go ahead and play this uh, couple minutes uh, uh, from the whiteboard crypto on YouTube. There's a lot of YouTube channels out there. You can find out a lot about the blockchain technology and Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies that will help educate you. But we need to know what a stable coin is so take take a listen a couple minutes right here just a few basics about what they call a stable coin in the world of cryptocurrency a stable coin is pegged to the u.s dollar and should always equal one dollar theoretically bitcoin the first cryptocurrency was actually created to be used as a store of value however since it's not widely adopted and there aren't very many regulations on it yet the price fluctuates a lot so much so that it is classified as a speculative investment so what if you want to store money using crypto technology but you don't want to risk your investment with the price fluctuations of crypto in today's world well you can use a trusted stable coin before we get too deep into stable coins you first need a refresher on the differences between a centralized exchange and a decentralized exchange. A centralized exchange is an exchange that is owned by one entity, like Coinbase, but they allow you to buy and sell cryptocurrencies. Since they are a company, they are technically regulated by the government that they answer to. On the other hand, a decentralized exchange is an exchange that is not run by a company. Instead, they are ran by code. Changes to the exchange only happen when the code is changed, and due to their decentralized nature, a government cannot regulate, control, or even shut them down like they could due to Coinbase. Using stablecoins, you can trade back and forth from Ethereum to a stablecoin, from that stablecoin to Bitcoin, from that Bitcoin back to another stablecoin, whenever you want using a decentralized exchange. This way, you don't have to pay as many fees, you don't have to wait as long, or you don't have to worry about the government tracking or canceling your transactions as if you would have to do as if you used a centralized exchange. Now, this is actually a really good advantage of stablecoins. Let's say you purchase 100 Bitcoins for $100. Bitcoin then goes up to $10,000 per coin. So you sell 50 Bitcoins for half a million dollars. So you trade 50 of those Bitcoins to DAI or USDC, which are stable coins for half a million dollars. And then you hold it when you can then buy back at a lower price. It's almost like a cryptocurrency savings account. Stable coins are also beneficial when investing on platforms like Aave or Compound, where you can actually earn interest on your crypto assets because you don't have to worry about the price fluctuations. 20% APR in Ethereum does not matter if Ethereum drops by 
half. However, 20% APR on your USDC stablecoin is delicious. Moving on, we're going to move into some technical stuff. How do stablecoins work? Well, mainly, they work in two different ways. Collateralization or through algorithmic mechanisms, also known as smart contract manipulation. Those are a lot of big words, but we're going to break it down for you. First off, fiat collateralization means that each coin is backed by something. In most cases, that is one US dollar. In some, though, it's other countries' currencies like the euro or even gold. Tether is in fact one of the most major companies that released their USDT stablecoin using fiat collateralization. Now there are some rumors that they do not have a dollar for every USDT that they have minted. Kind of like there's rumors like you haven't subscribed yet, but we'll get onto that later. The pros of a fiat collateralized stablecoin is that they are quite stable, much more than the alternative. However, they do have problems. The first is that the money required to put up for each USDT cannot be invested. This could mean millions of dollars for that company that are not earning interest. Another problem is someone at the company could embezzle or steal a bunch of that collateral. And one last problem, specifically that Tether faces, is that it's very difficult to prove that you own the total amount of collateral. Let's move on to the second method, because as an alternative to the fiat collateralization method, some stablecoins are controlled by smart contracts. Well, before we get any deeper, let me just we'll stop right there. Smart contracts use a log, uh, a log a logarithmic rhythms and they will help keep the dollar uh keep that uh what they call the stable coin pegged to the dollar now there are several stable coins there's some that got call letters usdt it's called tether it's been around one of the longest and we we had the founder of tether on uh, doc holiday's rock splitting politics uh, you can go back and uh, listen and look for those shows and uh, another stable coin is USDC, and and, and they got some called uh, uh, Dai, and uh, and there's there's eight to ten that know of. There's more being developed, but they're stable to the dollar. Now they do have stable coins that are pegged to the euro, and and sometimes a, a country's particular um, uh, currency, but most we're seeing more and more that are pegged to the American dollar. Now, what does that mean? Well, one of the things it means is that there is a there is a thought within America that, especially in the financial world, the old banking system, the Federal Reserve, everybody looking at this, it's very scary to think America has the world's reserve currency and can we risk not being the world's reserve currency because it provides a lot of opportunities for america it gives us an american privilege basically it's a, an american privilege but other countries like russia and china have hated that and it goes back to a lot of the petrodollars that richard nixon when he took america off the gold standard he pegged things that we made assurances that Saudi Arabia and OPEC they would have power but they had to make sure that oil was purchased in the American dollar and that's what's really helped stabilize America's currency as being the world's reserve currency everybody's had to have the American dollars to buy oil and buy energy for their countries well going back to that it's, it's not as strong as it was uh, in the past but the American dollar is still the world's reserve currency. It's very important that we keep that position. Russia hates it. China hates it. And they're working together in some ways. And China, what, what do we say? They've banned cryptocurrency. They've banned Bitcoin. And they don't want their citizens to be able to do something they don't know what they're doing. But in America, I don't see us banning Bitcoin or cryptocurrencies. They want to regulate it more. Maybe it could use some regulation. What we said before, you remember what uh, Republicans working with Democrat Bill Clinton back in the 90s, they, they said, let's don't tax the Internet. Let's give it a chance to grow and develop and see what happens with the Internet. Can the, can the politicians stay away from uh, s taxation that just rips out the heart of cryptocurrency? Not with the Democrats in charge. I'm just afraid that it's not going to be happen. But the Democrats and Republicans 
and everybody looking at this is starting to wonder when we talk about stable coins if more and more stable coins are developed and are pegged to the American dollar does that strengthen America as the world's reserve currency or does it take away if we're using cryptocurrencies you'd think it'd take away from America's ability to be the world's reserve currency but if we have so many stable coins pegged to the American dollar will that not sort of give us a foundation on the early edge of these years of cryptocurrency and finding out what it does it may it may actually strengthen it could we don't know and people are looking at it, but do you think that stable coins around the world pegged to the American dollar could that actually strengthen America's position as being the world's reserve currency? Because people will want to know what the dollar is, and they want to match that dollar. Well, that's what you need to realize about the future and what's going on. And cryptocurrencies and stable coins that are part of the cryptocurrency world can strengthen America's role in the world and China banning cryptocurrencies it is due to their control their communist nature the socialist nature of control and absolute government control and and you know we're seeing that played out in America it should scare Americans to death what Joe Biden and the socialists are doing to get more and more control and we have less and less freedom and liberty but so far America is not trying to ban Bitcoin or cryptocurrency. They need to do policy that will help it proliferate because it is scaring China to death. And China is making a huge choice to ban cryptocurrency because they don't trust their citizens and it could weaken them. We did a show, you know, we just did a show about is China on the brink of woe, W-O-E because of the Evergrande situation. If you're not familiar with that, a huge real estate firm that's near bankruptcy, they're barely making payments. And if it collapses, they have poison because they've got so many connections to Chinese banks, Chinese real estate projects. And there's these um, rumors, and people have shown pictures of them, how many we don't know, that some of these real estate companies working with banks borrowed all these billions of dollars to build cities in China and now these cities are empty there's no return on investment so what's going to hit the fan well that's where China may have really did themselves in banning Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies and what does that mean for America as we ponder, as our politicians ponder, because they don't understand how important this is, don't overregulate cryptocurrencies. Do not tax them to death in America, because now we're building a foundation that it could be around for, we know, decades. It may be a century or two. It's very important that the politicians do not sink this, do not hesitate to let it grow and let it proliferate like the internet did conservatives that's why i'm telling you don't diss bitcoin don't say i don't understand it i don't want to do anything with it you need to know enough about it to see what's good for america what's good for the world economy and the chinese controlling the world economy is not good and if the digital one is the first chinese is it could be the first big major country that has its own digital uh, currency is that scary well it could be if they rule the world but why should they with america and american know-how american ingenuity and now american loved cryptocurrency that doesn't mean all cryptocurrencies are in america it means america has a love of cryptocurrency and we need to proceed with the light regulation that may be needed, but do not, do not put a dagger in the heart of cryptocurrency in America. That's the word that the politicians need to hear and understand. And so Bitcoin, cryptocurrency, 
is playing a part in the world economy and instead of a collapse it could actually be insurance against the collapse it can help strengthen think about the stable coins they can stabilize America as the world's reserve currency and that will embolden America to grow and to keep China at bay and it, if Chinese uh, if their system collapses because they choose to stay away from cryptocurrency then that's the communist being so greedy wanting so much control that they implode from the inside and with ever grand situation and uh, the banks that <laughs> communist <laughs> communist banks do you think we're hearing the whole truth about the loans <laughs> do you really think we're hearing the whole truth they could be on thin ice for their economy. And banning cryptocurrencies may be the could be the, the one thing that breaks China and it may take them decades to recover. America, be smart. American voters vote for politicians who do not lean socialist, who are not socialist, who do not support socialist in any way. Because they would like to do nothing more than put people in power who will say, we'll ban cryptocurrency or we'll control. All they want is absolute power and control. And that means over cryptocurrency and Bitcoin, do not give it to them. Do not let them have it. America stands strong for freedom and liberty. And that's what we say and that's what we do right here. Doc Holliday's Rock Splitting Politics. Thank you for listening. Got another show next week. See you then. Thanks for joining us today, and remember to listen again next week for another edition of Doc Holliday's Rock Splitting Politics. You can order Ed's new book, Bedrock Truths, by clicking on the book cover right in front of you on the screen, or visit DocHolliday.org. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you again next week.